Hello, extraordinaries, and welcome back to the High Performance Consciousness Podcast. My name is Matthew Patty, and today we have a little rib tickler of a of an episode. Well, I say rib tickler because I do find the human language funny sometimes, especially particular words, and I'll uh, go into that in more detail soon. But really, the focus of this episode is around we, how often we kick and scream our way into a new future. Yes, we kick and scream like little kitties all the way into our new future. And uh, let me give this a little bit more premise and a little bit more backbone. Quite often, we will either, through free will, we will make a choice to change the direction of our focus and the target of our desired results in business. And when we do, through the use of free will, our own conscious ability to choose, we often feel elated and excited around it. Not all the time, but often we feel elated and excited when we feel that it is our choice, that we have come to determine the new course of action and the new alignment. However, the kicking and screaming part comes when we come face to face with any perceived obstacles, blocks or fears that ultimately are on the way, not in the way. So what happens when life changes are brought upon you or the perception that outside influences are brought upon you that you are forced to change like the market that is happening in the uh, worldwide in the moment you know something outside of your control maybe it's something someone said or did in your family or your clients or your you know your your sphere of influence and you felt that change was brought about and brought upon you by others so we can often feel resistant and deeply resentful for having to change, having to readjust and realign or change our direction of focus. And we go kicking and screaming into a new future. So why do we kick and scream? We kick and scream because here's the rib tickler, because we are gelatinous masses. (laughs) I love that. And gelatinous mass If we go back to dictionary and we start looking at uh, the Cambridge Dictionary, gelatinous is thick and jelly-like. But here's what I like the best. When used in an example, the result is a sticky gelatinous mass that produces a defense mechanism for the hagfish when under stress. Let me say that again. The result is a sticky gelatinous mass that provides a defense mechanism or the hagfish when under stress. So therein lies that. When our body is being given the option to move into a new future through a conscious decision that you have made, then any debris, any density, any unresolved wounds or trauma or beliefs that are within your body through the, you know, pumping through your your organs, your tissues, ligaments, cells, everything. This chemical interface is saying, hang on a minute, I don't know how to enroll myself in a new future, so I'm coming up with stress. So the stress is, well, I feel overwhelmed, I feel frustrated, I feel fearful. That change is coming and it is it has already arrived, as a matter of fact, in the now moment through your conscious decision to make a new alignment, to change tack or change direction. So I hope this is making sense. So the funny uh, language around us being gelatinous masses is that we have we typically haul our buns into a new future, hauling our buns into a new future. And we often have junk in our trunk. <laughs> we have junk in our trunk because of what we deem as potential, what we deem that we have potential from our past experiences. So we look to the past and we go, where can I find evidence that change like this brings about harmony or brings about balance or brings about um, success or fulfillment? And then when the body says, I can't find evidence of that in your past, I get fearful because now I'm going from the known, which is what I've always known and how I've always responded and how I've, all, how I've always reacted to external stimulus or internal drivers for change. And I don't like it. I'm used to the known. So when you give me something, this is the subconscious mind, 
That is saying, as the body, is saying, you're giving me something new and I have no evidence of it yet. So I'm going into the unknown. And so we have to haul our gelatinous mass. <laughs> I don't know how many times I'm going to say that in this episode. Um, into the future. And often we do it kicking and screaming all the way until we think, oh, okay, that wasn't so bad after all. I'm sure you can remember as a child, you know, mum or dad sort of saying, hey, we're going on a little driving adventure or whatever. And no, I don't want to go. That's boring. Oh, when are we going to get there? When are we there? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? So we're kicking and screaming all the way until we get to this place. And then it's like, wow, oh, thanks. This is really cool, isn't it? So although it's you know, a childlike example, we often do that with our inner child. And whether change is brought upon us from outside or whether change is brought upon us reflectively from our own conscious decision to make change, we will face the kicking and screaming, the tantrum of the old self. The old self is the gelatinous mass that wants to stay thick and jelly-like. Might sound a bit gross, but nonetheless, if you're Using your imagination and your very visual, like I am, which does, uh, you know, give me the uh, rib tickling all the time through my imagination, that you can haul yourself into a new future in the now by observing how your body responds to change. So if something didn't work in your sales pipeline, if something didn't go the way that you anticipated it on a sales call, if something didn't happen the way that you expected it to, in any area of your life, quite often we will have the, the a sympathetic response in the body that will rise to the surface and feel super visceral by way of our emotions. That's the gelatinous mass that says, hey, it wasn't meant to be this way because I'm looking for a particular type of evidence and you're not feeding me the proof for me to hold that belief or hold the evidence that this is possible. So I hope this is making sense as well. So the way to move beyond the kicking and screaming gelatinous mass scenario is to be mutable, be open and available to change. And open and available to change doesn't mean that you're a loosey-goosey, sort of pie-in-the-sky, um, flaky individual. It just means that you are open and respectful and responsive to new information, new intel that comes into your field of awareness. So when you feel the rise of doubt or fear, frustration, overwhelm, even elation, which is on the counter side of frustration and um, depression, then you're starting to sort of think, well, hang on a minute, I've got evidence of this which is proof from my past and my body as a time machine is going back into the past for look for, to look for the evidence to make sure that I'm okay, that I'm safe, that I'm secure because it is known. So when you can use your awareness to look forward, we're into the unknown and make the unknown real, meaning the unknown is now has evidence of being real because you are clear on your outcome, you're clear on your destination, you know exactly, precisely, specifically what evidence you will experience and see and feel in your desired future or when you have reached success, then you bring that back into the now. And the body of evidence, which is your body and your physiology, your neurochemistry, everything starts to come online to a higher potential. So you move from the sludgy, gelatinous mass, low octave of low potential based on past experiences to a higher octave of higher potential and higher performance by realizing that you have a choice right now. And that choice is do I unwind my potential and rest back into the immutability of fear so it keeps me safe and secure, that it doesn't help me evolve on an ongoing basis. It shows me where my potential is. Fear shows potential. So instead of walking towards fear or running away from it, run towards your fear. Run towards that which comes up in your body, in your neurochemistry, in your physiology and biology, 
run towards it. And in running towards it, you now are freeing yourself of debris. You're now starting to unhinge those old beliefs and old thought patterns and old actions and old feelings that tied you to a predictable future. Essentially, it kept the past alive in your future. So your destiny is to evolve. Your destiny is to move into higher octaves of performance, higher octaves of self-expression and personal uh, attainment and accomplishment. And how you do that is by shedding density. So instead of kicking and screaming into, the, into your new future, take ownership, swallow the big hairy horse pill of potential, which feels like responsibility at the beginning, because it is, it's you, it's all you baby, you hear me say that a lot, and I'll do a specific episode on that. But essentially, own the change, and when change is brought upon you, still own the change. And how you own the change is by deciding what evidence you will create and look for and design ahead of time so that it works for you. So that change into the unknown, which is something you may not have experienced yet, so your senses are still a little bit naive and you're still looking to be trained and enrolled and envisioned into a new future. So by doing that, now you can bring your senses online to new evidence. And so using the reticular activating system, when you start talking about red Ferraris, you'll see red Ferraris everywhere. When you're starting to talk about butterflies, you'll see butterflies everywhere. So the reticular activating system will look for evidence. So it's the prover. So the conscious mind, when change is brought upon you by others or seemingly brought upon you by others, especially when you make change yourself, is see the potential in the change by making a very clear, specific list of outcomes, evidence that will be made real in your reality. So now there is no unknown. You now know what the new future looks like because you have chosen what you prefer to experience in your new reality. Wow, that's deep. Give you a moment just to think about that. Because we have such untapped potential, untapped potential, the reservoir, the ocean of potential that exists within you to dream, to imagine, to take flight into new, new creative ventures is huge, limitless, absolutely limitless. So when you feel like you are dragging the chain and that you feel things are slow, or that you feel that there's an impatience that is coming up inside of you. The impatience is the old self looking for proof that the new future is real. Let me say that again. Impatience is the old self, the old identity. It's the self that existed in the past that is looking for proof that the future that you desire and prefer is real. So give it to it. So instead of feeling impatient, we now enroll the body, the mind, and through our aligned actions in the future, in the now. And so little by little, impatience is eroded and replaced with potential. And that potential becomes realized because the past uh, is fact. It's artifact. It's history already been and done. Okay. So when you start to think that that is matter, matter is denser than waves. So waves and particles, energy and matter. So when you have a thought and a feeling and you're using your imagination, you have an idea, it's in a wave form. Now when you, you can collapse that wave function into a particle, transferring energy into matter by taking action on your future now. Does that make sense? So as you do that, and as you enroll yourself in the higher potential and the higher vibration and frequency of your preferred reality, then you are releasing, discharging yourself from the hospital, the jail, the term, the sentence of your past. It sounds a bit heavy. 
So I want to dislodge some of this uh, gelatinous mass, some of this density within you on this, this particular episode to really make you think that you are turning all the cells over in your body every couple of days, everything over a period of weeks and months, everything over a period of years, everything is being turned over and renewed in your body. So why isn't your thinking? Why isn't your action? Why aren't your feelings turning over, turning over and becoming renewed, becoming new and vibrating at a higher octave and dropping that density like the fuselage of or the, the fuel canister from a rocket dispensing that when it's empty? Why aren't we doing that? Well, we're doing it and we, we're not doing it rather because we have no belief that the new future, your preferred reality in business with clients, your personal life is possible because you haven't reverse engineered what your end looks like specifically and how it feels and functions like enough. You haven't given specificity to your new future. So how can an idea as a waveform collapse into particle and be transferred from energy into matter without enough energy and stability to maintain that experience or to, to build that reality in the materialistic view, in the world of matter? It can't. So the strongest frequency wins. So whilst you cast your, your, um, your fishing line into your new future, into the quantum field, as you turn the reel, and you're winding the line back in, you're bringing your future to you. And the, the effort and focus and attention on, on winding the reel, pulling the line back in, bringing your future into the now, is your practice. Practice upgrading yourself. Practice your future now. Rehearsal, rehearsal, rehearsal. Again, the entrepreneur is the athlete. And so where you do one thing, it will find you and follow you into other areas of life. So you can free yourself from the kicking and screaming gelatinous mass experience by being cognizant and aware and giving attention to your preferred experiences in the now. And so as things arise in you and change is either perceived to be brought upon you by outside change and influence or by internal change and decisions consciously that you've made, then both are the same. Both are an invitation to awaken new opportunity. Change is the invitation to awaken new opportunity. And there is no person alive on the planet, 7.5 plus billion people on the planet, therefore 7.5 plus billion realities on the planet, there is not one living entity, one living individual on the planet that is not capable of upgrading their life, of changing their identity, of changing their future to a state that is preferred. Not one person. Every single person has that capability. Every single person. So I hope this episode has helped. I'd encourage you to observe the gelatinous mass behavior of you or others around you when you go to make a change and the change often is brought about by life circumstance when something is changes whether it's a, a cash flow problem putting a business down a divorce or a, a separation of a relationship or a death or a, a birth whatever it's going to be that those events often are portrayed as positive or negative and yet they are all opportunities Everything comes in divine timing. And so it's not about time, it's about precision. So when you are ready to shift densities and you are ready to move to a higher octave of performance in your business and in your life, you will make that commitment. And slowly by slowly, moment by moment, you will become enrolled in the new future right now. And in doing so, the upgrade has already begun. In doing so, your future is now being experienced ahead of time. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you give me some, uh, um, some feedback and any questions or comments that you do have. And of course, share away if you want to. I'd love to uh, reach more people from me here to wherever you are in the world. Remember, it's all you, baby. 
See you in the field.